If you held mining stocks for 50 years and I held gold, I did over eight times better than you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hi everyone, and I want to welcome you to this video on precious metals versus the mining stocks. And I've got Alan Hibbard with me once again. Alan, how are you doing? I'm great, Mike. Thanks. How are you? Great. So we're going to start uh, with a chart, uh, and this is uh, from Incrementum AG, the In Gold We Trust report, uh, and it's uh, the stocks versus gold going back to the beginning of this century. And uh, it shows the performance of gold and the performance of the uh, gold and H it's the HUI, uh, Gold Mining Index. Now the HUI is the unhedged miners where they haven't uh, sold too much uh, production forward or uh, taken out futures contracts that they're going to deliver to in the future. Uh, and it's indexed to 100. So it's, it's this entire century. Uh, you got any comments on this? What, what do you think about it? Well, yeah, first of all, like you said, they're both indexed to 100. So you can see at the very end of the chart, whichever one is higher has a higher performance overall. And right now that's the physical metal. However, we do see some pretty steep rises in the short term. And so sometimes in the short term, miners outperform gold but in the long term, they don't. Right. I feel like, you know, if you get the proper advice and you pick the proper stocks and it's at the proper time, it has to be at a, at a bottom. You have this potential of vastly outperforming gold. So we've got uh, gold here up seven. So a factor of seven from... Um, well, actually, this would be six times, right? A six times uh, it increase, starts, yes. It, it starts, so at, at 700, it's gained six times over a factor of the value of 100, where we're starting it. And so, um, uh, but what I see here is that the stocks might outperform uh, gold. By Gold goes up 100 bucks, the stocks go up 300 bucks. So you got this three to one leverage. But then on the way down, you got four to one leverage. And over the long term, it just doesn't work out. Another thing that I want to point out is uh, that uh, there's there's all of these potential gains. hundred if gold goes up seven percent, uh, the stocks might go up one hundred ninety three percent. And as that well might be true, um, they're taking the all-time high of 2011 in the stocks and then the all-time high of uh, 2020 in the metals and sort of ignoring the fact that uh, from the lows in 2015, if, if this held true and it was sort of, you know, something tested in history and, and history sort of giving it its stamp of approval. Yes, this is somewhat guaranteed. It, it, it has a probability of happening more than a possibility of happening. Then from these lows, uh, gold went up and from its 2011 high, set broke that 2011 high and set a record. But uh, the stocks came nowhere near that. They way, way underperformed the potential promise that existed then. Uh, and so, you know, you and I took a, a much deeper dive into this for the book. Uh, first, I want to go and show this exact same chart. Now, this is from uh, Nick Laird of Gold Charts Are Us. And it's the exact same chart, but with one more data set added. The, old, the last chart just had the HUI. This all also contains the XAU Philadelphia Gold Mining Index, which is the large mining companies. And that one contains more hedged mining companies than unhedged, where they have sold future production. Uh, and they, they do uh, uh, take out futures contracts where they sell a futures contract into the market and promise delivery uh, some date in the future. And then they deliver into that contract. 
And uh, what you see here is the XAU from, from the beginning of this century is up 69%. The HUI is up 203%. And gold is up 573%. So this includes all of the... And one of the things here, the HUI has never, during this whole period of time, really outperformed gold. Uh, and so um, I contend that you really have to get good advice. So if you're going to be buying mining stocks, you should try and pick a stock analyst that has a track record of, uh, of doing good picks and uh, that you have to do it at exactly the right time, like here in 2000, the bottom of the 2008 cra crisis, the global financial crisis, the crash. Now, what was interesting in that crash is gold bottomed in October, uh, of 2008, gold and silver, but the stock markets didn't bottom until March of 2009. So if you had waited to, uh, and you know, it becomes very difficult to measure all of this and try and exactly nail the bottom. I mean, I did buy a whole lot more gold down in here and a whole lot more silver, uh, mostly silver. When gold and silver bottomed, I got silver at an average price. To, I, I doubled my position and my silver purchase was at 11 bucks an ounce. And I doubled my position in silver, the average. Uh, it got down to the high sevens, I believe, during that pullback. Uh, so uh, this just shows again that it seems like the stocks might be leveraged, you know, uh, two times uh, for the XAU going up but three times going down and maybe four times with the HUI going up, but six times going down. <laughs> so over the long run, it never works out. And you and I, this is another one of those charts that I drove you nuts with, Alan, uh, where you made this and presented it in different formats uh, several times, and then we updated it. And this was uh, done... Uh, probably about one year ago, because that's about when we were wrapping up all of the data that we had gathered and updating everything and about to produce the book. So uh, all the charts that we had generated over the past four years all had to be updated with the latest information <laughs> in the months uh, going into the final uh, closing of all of the writing of this book and get updated. And here again, you've indexed at 100. So Barron's Gold Mining Index, this goes back into the 30s. But there was no reason to present it when gold was still pegged to the dollar at $35 an ounce and the gold price wasn't moving. So you selected August 13th, the last uh, trading day, where gold was actually $35 an ounce. And we, we, you indexed everything at 100 Back when gold was $35 an ounce, <laughs> we have the performance. Give me some input on what you think. But you worked on this chart a lot. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and others like it. So give yeah, me some exactly. Input. Well, I'm, I'm happy to. So just like you said, this chart, like the other two we've looked at today, is indexed to 100. So everything gets the same starting point on the left side of the chart. If you want to know which one did better overall, you look at the right side of the chart and just see which one is higher on the page. So right. very simply, it's the gold line. It's gold outperforming the mining index by a lot. If you only look at the spacing, it looks like the blue line is about half as high as the yellow on the right side. However, it's not a linear chart. It's logarithmic. So you got to look at the numbers. So it's really not a doubling in performance. It's uh, about a factor. Yeah, you have to divide four thousand uh, to round this into, you know, since we rounded this up, uh, this four four hundred and if the three thousand nine hundred and thirty three into you, you divide it by four sixty and you get the how many times it would outperform. Correct? Yes, it's more than eight. So if we take four thousand yeah. compared to five hundred, that's more than eight times the performance over the last fifty years. That's a right. no brainer. And then I had you do it in another format where you simply uh, divide the lines into each other and you end up with this. And this is if you're 
paying for the Barron's Gold Mining Index in ounces of gold, and then you want to, so if you had put in 100 ounces of gold at the in 1971, on the first trading day, when gold was 35 bucks an ounce, the gold mining shares would only be worth 12 ounces of gold at the end of this chart, which means that the gold outperformed the stocks by a factor of 8.33, correct? Have you got anything to add to that? No, you're absolutely right. So basically, if if you if you held mining stocks for 50 years and I held gold, I did over eight times better than you. <laughs> right. With, uh, I want to point out, with almost zero risk, this is the important thing about gold and silver. The risk is is close to zero. I always, uh, you know, I um, wrote years ago, and we made a video on it, that gold and silver come with a central bank guarantee. The guarantee isn't that gold and silver will go up. The guarantee is that the dollar will always go down because they're going to create more of them. That is the guarantee. You can't have a commodity that is also money uh, priced in that currency that they're always diluting the currency supply and stealing purchasing power out of it. When they're devaluing the currency supply and money, the gold and silver are measured in that currency, then uh, they eventually, it's a guarantee that eventually they have to go up. Now, a couple other things I want to say about, uh, you know, I think I'll go back to one of these earlier charts. Hi, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for subscribing and mention that if you'd like to help our channel, please consider my company, goldsilver.com, the next time you buy precious metals. We're one of the most trusted names in the industry. Our prices are sharp, delivery is fast, and we have an insider's program where you find out exactly what I'm doing with my own investments. Thanks for making goldsilver.com your dealer. And now back to the video. About the mining companies uh, is that the, especially the juniors, they are the greatest inflators on earth. You think a central bank can print currency? <laughs> <laughs> Wait until you see the dilution of the stock shares of these mining companies, especially the juniors, which have to survive by doing private placements and diluting their stock float. Uh, I, you know, in, in 2020, 2020, 2019, 2020, 2021, I accumulated, uh, I think, 13 uh, uh, explorers, uh, junior mining companies, and a lot of these were with... Um, a bunch of professional input from stock mining analysts or buying uh, things where, for instance, Eric Sprott of uh, Sprott Asset Management had purchased uh, uh, private placements in these companies. I he's been a very, he's navigated this thing very well and become very, very wealthy off of the precious metals bull market. But uh, the uh, buying some of the same stocks as he had, and then stocks that were recommended by uh, highly qualified stock analysts. Uh, those, those stocks are down somewhere from 50 to about 96% <laughs> over the last three years. Uh, I have one that is up, and that one is a complete accident. A neighbor introduced me to one of her friends uh, and he lives just about three blocks away from me. And I took a look at his company <laughs> and it's a uh, silver explorer and producer uh, in the United States. And I bought a private placement in that as well. And it's up about 50%. Now, what I do have to say is the reason that I bought a swath of these things, I always considered them something to do with your gambling currency. Now, I had... Um, uh, years ago, on this first up leg, you know, I uh, started investing in uh, gold in 2002, and uh, actually it was October of 2002, and then I discovered silver in April of 2003, and I and I started buying silver, and then I bought, and it went up, and then I started buying silver stocks later, and I caught this last big up wave in gold and silver mining stocks. And I had 53 of them. And uh, a few of them uh, went under completely. Others 
merged and and got bought out and you end up with shares in a different diff more shares in a different company or whatever and then um uh the uh i had one quatera was it was called where it was a uh silver slash uranium producer and it did phenomenally well i sold in several tranches uh because we went through this crash in 2008 and the stocks just practically went to zero. And then when they bounced back, I, I, I had done, this is what caused me to do the Barron's Gold Mining Index study and divide it by the price of gold. Nobody, I had never read anybody that had done that, but I found this, uh, this long-term mining uh, company index and I divided it by the price of gold. And what I discovered that was over the long, over the long run, uh, you're not typically not going to do well on the mining stocks compared to just being in gold. And so when this bounced back, I don't know where I did this study, somewhere in here, I started selling tranches and I sold all of my mining companies up in this area. And it was just dumb luck. This wasn't, it was because the crash had punished me enough for me to do some research. And, uh, and I sold most of them. And this company, Quatera, uh, one of the tranches that I sold, I got 40 times my uh, investment back. Now, when I sold all of the tranches, I think I ended up with about 15 times my original investment. But that and a few others, uh, just I, I think with like three or four of the 53 I had invested in, I made more profit on those than, than my entire investment in all the stocks. And there were several others, most of them ended up with a profit because I sold in the right area. If I had them right now, I would be sitting on severe losses from my original investments back in this time frame. And so uh, um, to me, uh, unless you have gambling currency and you want a seat at the blackjack table or the roulette wheel, <laughs> if you want that, then invest in mining stocks which have the risk of an EPA uh, shutdown or delay, a mine collapse, a labor strike, bad management. The, the list of risks goes on and on and on. Name the list of risks with gold or silver that you can hold in the palm of your hand when you actually own it, not some ETF, when you act, or, or futures or options that you can actually hold in your hand that has no counterparty risk, can't experience a mine collapse, a labor strike, an EPA shutdown. Uh, you just, there, there isn't anything that you can name. Counterparty risk, like for instance, if you hold a stock, uh, that, that company has to perform well. And not only the company, but your brokerage platform <laughs> has to be in business. Uh, so uh, pretty much everything in life contains more risk than gold or silver. Got any input on that? I think that's a great point to finish it off. Yeah, uh, gold is money, everything else is credit. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I wanna thank you, Alan, for helping me analyze these. And thank you so much for putting all those charts together for the book and doing the research that uh, gave a background to all of this. Yeah, my pleasure, happy to do it and looking forward to uh, many more exciting charts and analyses in the future. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Hi, I just wanted to tell you about Gold Silver's 111 ounce silver giveaway where you can win, 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 one, one, one. One one ounce silver bar, one 10 ounce silver bar, and one 100 ounce silver bar. So enter today and win.